Hey guys, welcome everyone to the live stream. Tonight we are gonna watch the second semi final of the Euro League. A match between Dark Team and Czech Payback. It's surely gonna be exciting. I'm pretty sure both teams are very motivated to advance to the final. And probably the match is gonna start soon. I'm expecting some delay because it's the Euro League. There is always some delay because someone is always late. Regardless, that gives us some opportunity to talk about some interesting facts, some statistics, some data from the competition so far. Okay, so the base season has ended this season. There has been a couple of um, there have been a couple of more uh, modifications to the system of the Euro League. One of them is we are playing a seven rounds long base season and then two rounds of playoff in groups of four. So that means the first four teams form group one, and the winner of this group is gonna be the winner of the competition. And we can see that dark team which team has won the euro league last season winning each of their games um apparently i was part of that team as well but this year i have another team so back to this season dark team has won also all of their base season games which means they have seven points but of course points are irrelevant in the playoffs only thing is that if this match would be a draw, the Dark team would advance because they placed higher in the base season. These two teams, Dark team and Czech Payback, have met already once. You can see that Czech Payback finished fourth with five points, but the worst coefficient out of the three five point teams. They've played in the fourth round already once. And let's check the match. Dark team actually won 13 and a half, 4 and a half. A very confident victory from the Polish squad. We can see that Adif, that is Adrian Fitzerman, the runner up the, of the previous World Championship, scored 4 and a half points in 6 games. We can see that uh, Peaceman, that is Pavel Novak, scored 4 points in 6 games. And possibly, I remember that match because that was also streamed. And I found personally Puholak, aka Michal Zajk, the best in that match, who scored four points in four games, but then was substituted by the captain Piotr Malowski, who then scored one point in two games against Kuba Horak. A lot of lot of strong players in Czech payback as well. They have Peyroxid, that is Stepan Tesajik, they have Tsarok, that is Patrishka, they have three IF and D E F, that is Jakub Horak, they have Deathbat, that is Jan Kopetsky, they have Chump, that is Adam Horvat. And in this match did not play, but they also have on the team Vladimir Nipoti and Jan Krabek. So, seven strong players. I'm wondering who's going to play tonight. I'm wondering how prepared the Czechs are. Because a win here would mean that they advanced to the final where they would play against my team. Um, if we go back a little to the standings, we finished second with Serial Chillers, third place was taken by Wild Dragons, and two days ago, on Friday, we already played the first semi-final match, where we won 15-3, so we are already in the final, therefore the winner of this match is going to play against us. And the loser of the match is going to play against the Wild Dragons for the third place. Let's see the lobby. We can see that we have the core 
dark team here already, Adrian Fitzerman, Michal Zajek and Pavel Novak, as well as Piotr Malovejski, but I believe he is going to start as a substitution in this match. That has been their basic uh, lineup throughout the season. From the Czechs we have Patrick Zizka, Stepan Tesajik, Jakub Horak and Adam Horvat so far in the lobby. But I would not be surprised if Vladimir Nipoti would come around for example. Not sure what the waiting is on, perhaps the Czechs are still waiting for a starting player or they are discussing the starting tree. I'm not sure, I do not see the captain of the Czech team here, so I'm assuming that uh, Paroxid is gonna be the acting captain in this match. And I suppose what we have now is a little bit of waiting time before we can proceed towards the games. So maybe until then we can check some individual statistics from the season. Let's see who we have. We have highest ranked from these two teams. We have Adrian Fitzerman who has 30 points from 38 games. Right behind him is Petr Zizka who has 28 and a half from 40 games. Then the next one is Pavel Novak who has 23 from 36. And we have Michal Zajk here, 17 points out of 24 games. And we have to go a little lower, I believe. Yeah, we have Jakub Horak here, 15 and a half points out of 26 games. Piotr Malovejski, 15 and a half out of 28. Stepan Tesasik, 15 out of 26. And... I'm assuming the other guys played a little less games. Yeah, we have Jan Kopetsky 6 points out of 12 games. I might have missed Adam Horvat. No, he, he is here. 5 points out of 12 games. And I believe Vladimir Nipoti, yeah, he only played against us probably. He has 4 points out of 6 games. So, based on that, we could see who played the most games in the Euroleague so far. And we already have pairings. So, let's see. The expected starting team from Dark Team and the Czech payback is starting with Patrick Zizka, Adam Horvat, and Stepan Tesajik. Which means... Jakub Horak is here, but is starting on the bench. Okay, we have the pairings for the first round already. It's Adrian Fitzerman versus Petr Zizka, Pavel Novak versus Adam Horvat, Michal Zajk versus Cepan Tesajik. As you could get used to it, we're gonna try and watch all three games at once. And I'm gonna try and comment all three games at once. should not be super hard before time travel at least okay just a little bit of resizing so that we will be able to see all three boards properly And that should do it, probably. I really hate resizing these boards.
Okay, so we already have an opening from Pavel Novak against Adam Horvat. A uh, steamy opening right in the top central area, uh, bottom central area of the board. I would be very, very surprised if Adam Horvat would do anything besides a swap to. One more thing that's very important to note is that in the playoffs the time control increases while we have been playing with 7 minutes plus 3 seconds Fisher increment in the base season in the playoffs it's 10 minutes plus 3 seconds Fisher increment which is the old time control of the Euro League Okay, the swap 2 has already arrived from Adam Horvat. We can see that here is the addition of two stones. And probably his core idea or concept is likely to put a stone somewhere in this area and keep keep control keep it under control. The area prevent black from attacking or expanding it's a bit risky because black might be able to find some powerful combination of course depending on where the white stones are coming but first Pavel Novak has to decide on the color here we have Michal Saik one of his favorite openings, Lear shifted to the right side, usually he starts it from d4. Stepan Tesajik already chose white color and placed his first stone. He is playing aggressively, he wants to already go to the space a bit. Um, here we are definitely going to see some interesting position of battle between the two veterans of the game. And finally, we have Patry Zizka who put a central opening against Adrian Fitzerman, who has been thinking for more than two minutes already on the swap two. Because I'm pretty sure he is going to put a swap two. It's like 99% of the time he puts a swap two, if it's not a corner or edge opening. Okay, this is the addition of two stones that he has managed to come up with. It is definitely looking interesting. A couple of, of uh, possibilities that need to be carefully checked. Because if there is no good white continuation, these black stones can be connected obviously easily. And if you can cover this area easily and launch counter attacking moves, then black might be overpowered but at the same time a move like this on age 11 could make it really hard for black and a very very tight attack would be needed to progress from there i'm curious what color or what strategy first patrishka is going to come up with he can play this defensively, aggressively, really depends on, on him. Here we already see that they are playing this positional game. So far, Peroxid looks a little better in it, but it's still very much under control from Michal Zayk, I believe. He has played this opening and these lines thousands of times over his career. So I'm pretty sure that he should know what he's doing here. Which also means at the same time that he is not going to play some early losing move in the position. Yeah, as you can see, after a quick combination, there is this threat, but I'm very convinced that E6 is coming from black because 
there is simply not enough here to win you would think maybe that there is this diagonal threat but g1 is saving it so there is no win apparently which is why i would play e6 aggressively an alternative would be to play maybe j5 but i would prefer to play e6 and so is Michal Zayek, which is, I believe, the best move in the position. Eventually, here, Pavel Novak decided to pick uh, black pieces. And as expected, Adam Horvat already played on i5 somewhere here. In this area to try and control the position I believe Pavel Novak's strategy is going to be that he wants to be the offensive player he wants to probably be aggressive early on in the position he maybe sees some beautiful lines I don't know I'm not sure especially because maybe k4 now in this position would be very powerful for white i don't see a proper black continuation after k4 the attack would be impossible to be continued and as a matter of fact white would gain some offensive chances so one of two things is incoming here i believe k4 j5 or maybe i4 these moves can be considered by adam horvat i i believe the rest of the moves would be suboptimal at the very least Stepan Tesashi quickly noticed that g1 is controlling the position, therefore he cannot extend his attack there, it would be in vain, and he tries to get a hold of Michal Saik using e5, a passive defensive move, and it's quickly answered by g7, which prevents white from basically creating anything anywhere, and... It also means that black has tempo and I'm pretty sure that white is going to try and play maybe g8 in this position regardless of which move is being picked. The only way Stepan Tessaji can play this is passive, very very passive, which means there will be space and resources at hand for Michal Zaik to take the first point here it appears that h5 was picked by Adam Horvat which I believe as mentioned it was not among my picks so I would say it's a bit suboptimal it allowed a little bit of accumulation of stones for Pavel Novak in this area which stops prevents white from further attacking but needs to go back to defending once more and after that i believe pavel novak is going to be able to maybe think of his own attack here we can see that patrizishka eventually picked black pieces he evaluated that there is no strong enough attack for white and Adrian has to play something with white and it seems he's still thinking on it. In the meantime g8 did occur on the board which was followed by j7 and a quick defensive block <coughs> by uh, Stepan Tesajik on i7. Michal Zayk is expanding his attack maybe a bit too quickly I feel like this was played a bit too quickly because I'm not entirely convinced that this is gonna be enough now obviously obviously 
there will be a defensive combination incoming. Okay, without playing the 4, this is probably stronger. It's probably stronger because now this will be able to be played and... Oh well, I don't know. Now a move like L3 would look very very threatening. Oh, okay, this game is over. This game is just over. L3 has to be played. I'm pretty sure it will be played. And then it's game over. You cannot come back from that, I highly doubt. L4, K4, one of these moves have to be winning. Mihal Zag just needs to calculate which one it is. And that's it. Game's over, but L4 looks plenty of winning to me already. Okay, a very passive move by Adrian Fitzerman and a quick response by Patrick Zizka. I'm a little surprised how quick it was, but it's not looking bad for him. One of these threats has to be closed. And if you close one of them, you launch the other one and then you gain positional uh, space and you can keep on attacking. And it's gonna look really good for him. Meanwhile, Mihal Zeg sided with the direct attack. You can see that this diagonal using M4 and M5 is gonna be the one that is gonna win. Of course, he has to pay attention to the order of moves, but regardless, the game is decided. Here, Adam Horvat had to realize that he has to go back to defending. Pavel Novak only on two minutes and he is planning his offensive movements. It seems like he has come to a decision. He played K6, which is almost surely gonna be blocked from above from above yeah and after that I'm not not entirely sure where he wants to continue the attack it could be that he is aiming to play I don't know g4 or 5 and somehow link these areas that could be his idea I don't see a winning combination there I believe it could be defended but there might just be something. We shall see. So, Stepan Tesaji played an opening and a very, very quick swap to came from Mihal Saik. I believe it was super, super quick. Um, definitely quicker than necessary. Now he is in a really, really tough position. Because this line is pretty much useless for him, this also useless for him, and the accumulation of white stones in this area is just very much overwhelming in my opinion. I do not see how black can come back to this game, on the long run at least, it should be white. Oh wow, Adif is trying to block this from the outside. So he's giving up on posing any threat. And he is fully focused on somehow defending. But that could easily backfire because given the fact that he posed no threat here, Patrick Zizka could play something like, I don't know, H13, J11, something along those lines. He should be able to come up with something, in my opinion. He he only needs to pick the very best of moves. And that should be it. Yeah, J9 also an alternative. E10 was also an alternative. He was full of options there. A lot of, lot of options, really. Oh, to my surprise, this was blocked from outside. 
letting black try a little something here although i'm still convinced that it's gonna work because simply there's no not enough resources or space here There's just not enough space in my opinion here to, to create anything. You can pose a little bit of thread, but there should be a proper answer from white to each of them. And meanwhile here g4 was indeed played, so he indeed decided to do that. And the block comes from here, I'm not so sure that it's the right one, is it though? It's, it's not the right one. Or... Or it could be the right one. Because you can still defend on K5. If I'm not... K1, sorry. K1 and K5, the combination of the two. So this attack is not gonna work. I mean, J, uh, H4, J... Sorry, it's I3. Then you would go on J6. Not J, L6. J6. And then J7. That would be the combination. But K1 blocks it. And that's just smart thinking. Because. It prevents the black win. I don't know. I, it feels like there's no continuation after it. Which means. This side is irrelevant. There's nothing. No resources. And this could very well mean that black is going to be surrounded. Very much surrounded in this area. Could could easily happen. Oh wow, there was there was a little chance here. And it's it's not played. Hmm. A defensive move by Pavel Novak, who is in a bit of time trouble. He has 21 seconds left. And just for a second, let me see. It looks like Adif won that game. What could Tsarok possibly do? I believe we, we are going to have some time to check it while they are playing the round two pairings very surprised that uh adif could win, win that game it's uh really really surprising and here we have adif opening this corner Tsaro playing quite aggressively adif has played this same with Stepan Tesajik in the previous match and uh, Paroxit had a quite good position there possibly a win but he missed the threat and lost and there's a win here for Adam Horvat in time trouble Pavel Novak misses the threat and as of now it's 2-1 for Dark Team here between Mihal Zaik and Stepan Tesajik, this move F7, I believe this has not really been calculated well. This is an underestimation of basically all of the black threads in this area and allows black to play here exactly on C5, its only viable option and white is looking doomed. I don't know what the idea was, but uh, F7, it looks really like it, it's underestimating black completely in the area. And whilst white was superior in the position, now it's kind of doomed. I don't even know what possible move could be tried for defense. This just looks horrible. Horrible really, because whatever you do, there will still be resources here and you can easily connect your stones. 
a move like I don't know C7 maybe. It's just I have no idea what has happened there. But it's it's looking really bad all of a sudden for White. Here Adif is playing some interesting line. I don't know what next move he is planning. But he has to be very careful, and he is seemingly AFK at the table. I'm wondering where he is when he's on the move. In the second game between Adam Horvat and Pavel Novak, this opening has been played these three stones which are the most to the right side by Adam Horvath it's uh, one of his uh, beloved corner openings or edge openings it seems Peaceman chose white pieces and there is already some aggression but can it work it shouldn't it really shouldn't it leaves white this offensive line this might have been missed this might have been missed by by Adam Horvath or he may just know that there is no combination that's enough for for white to win there I don't know but this move was played very quickly of course in the middle it would be immediately answered by I8 and it would be bad so he might have risked it I'm not entirely sure but definitely Peaceman is going to spend some time now calculating whether he can win here or not and make his decision accordingly so here we have Adif played M5 was answered by L4 and he seems to be still AFK. It might be the bug of the website that shows you are not at the table even if you are. I've seen that quite a few times, so it's not impossible that that is happening. Patrzyszka is playing very confidently, very, very quickly from his opponent's edge opening he might be prepared for this Mihal Zayt is still thinking on his next move but I would still just play c7 I don't see a block after C7. Because you can't play the tree, you can't use it. C7 is plenty of to deal with. But maybe he is looking for a direct combination, I'm not sure. Regardless, C7 feels like the right move in the position. Adif plays an indirect threat on J3 forcing Patrzyszka to defend m3 which he can do by playing on i3 l3 m3 probably probably i would expect him to calculate whether m3 is suitable whether this line can be attacked from black's perspective if if he deems that this is enough for black to form an attack he is almost surely going to play L3 because this line is outside it's not doing anything and after L3 there's no attack here it's surely gonna be blocked from below and then still some defensive moves have to be played and then the question is probably the combination would be L3 then L2 comes and want to block it Adif is gonna play j6 then here comes j5 to block Adif plays 
K6 and then a block comes on L6 then you have to defend on L7 and you're left with an interesting position but a little destroyed position and you have to build your attack from scratch again somewhat somewhat because you will still have some resources to yourself I would say pretty good resources for example a move on h7 or j8 can be really really good for him but we have to see yeah the exact combination has been played we have to see how it pays out because black is there's not not a good attack for black down there so i would probably favor some move like j8 or maybe you can even be more aggressive and play i9 i would consider these moves first and of course h7 and here we can see that pavel novak made his decision he said he can win from there it's enough for him so my concern was he cannot attack up upwards i told that but he pretty much calculated that he yes he can because there's gonna be a vcf there's gonna be a vcf so this match between adam horvat and pavel novak is gonna be leveled very quickly good calculations by the polish player resulting in a point for him and his team 3-1 for dark team okay let's see what we have here h7 was chosen by patrick Zizka. i believe he spent a little too little time making this decision there were quite a few options from which he could choose and here eventually c7 was indeed played by Michal Zyk. Uh he carefully carefully analyzed the position and made this move which as i've said seems very much uh, devastating absolutely devastating because wherever you you have to block this vcf threat right and wherever you would block it you would still be forced and using this diagonal on d8 and b6 a couple of threats can be launched and you will not be able to effectively de defend it it's just not good and the reason why i said h7 is maybe too rushed for for a decision is exactly because of i6 you can see that it's a bit problematic now because there could be some threats here from black you cannot keep on attacking wills if you played for example i9 you would be able to continue your attack regardless of black's defensive stone it looks like patrick made a small mistake which will cost him the tempo in the match as i believe he has to go back to defense this time yeah undoubtedly because otherwise it's not good and i don't think that an actively defending move like i7 should be very much considered because of the underlying threats here it could be very risky it could be very risky and as i've said the combination of d8 b6 has been played it's another point for Mihal Zaik. once more he seems to have the best start in this match and it's apparently going to be a 4-1 lead for dark team very well played by Michal Zaik. so the defensive move has been played by Pari Zizka and Adif is trying to block the position and don't get me wrong he is really strong defensively so you really need to appreciate 
when you have the temple in a position against him and make good use of it. And this doesn't look like Patrushishka could make good use of it. It seems like Adif has been able to balance it. He could balance it. And that just means that it's going to be very hard to create some advantage once more, especially from the current position. Regardless, pretty sure Patrushishka is going to try. But what can he do here? His options are possibly possibly playing j8 or i9. That's how I see it. I would favor i9 because after j8 you can still play here on k9 and it's looking a bit complicated. Black is gonna most probably defend throughout the entire game, but that rarely, rarely upsets Adrian Fitzerman. He, he is somewhat used to defending throughout entire games, just so that he can have a chance at the end and take the match point or game point. Now it's it's still not easy because. Black has to find some proper defense and after this move Black's gonna be a bit more surrounded once more. This is why I preferred I9 uh, opposing J8 because I9 plays more into the space, more into the empty area and that's what you need when you have such a position. You need to take good use of the space you have. Probably Adif is thinking on his best defensive approach and very well here we are this is what he could come up with he's the one who plays a stone into the space leaving some local threats to Petr Zizka, believing that's just not gonna be good enough So let's see if they can be made good enough. Probably not though. But let's see. Possibly, possibly a move like E8 or E9 could be considered in this position. One of them at least should be played in my opinion. But we shall see. Yeah, the more more expected E9, E8 is a bit maybe more aggressive. But oh, this could work as well. I would not entirely be surprised if some defensive move like E7 would come from Adrian Fitzerman. That would be perfectly fitting his style. Yeah, e7, a strong position, a defensive move. Adif knows how to defend, Adif knows how to play Gomoku, he defends the space really well. It's not an accident that he finished second in the World Championship last year in Budapest, in Hungary. So Petr Zizka is a little, little troubled here because he's running out of good options at the same time Adif has twice the amount of time he has Adif has to play d9 now real quick that's the only possibility here for him everything else would be losing he takes some time he takes some time and spots it he played it so now as you can see, Petri Zizka is kind of getting surrounded here. Adif successfully went outside of the position in just a couple of moves and now all of a sudden white can feel itself being a bit suffocated. That's what's happening here. This black stone, this E7 was so perfectly played 
I couldn't have done it better myself. It's it's just great move. Controls the area super well. And Petr Zizka is below one minute. And if just falls below two and a half. And I believe Petr Zizka might lose this game as well. It's strange but. Because of these outside stones and the time deficit. I'm leaning towards him losing this game. Baby tricks are not gonna work against a caliber of, of player like Adiv. You have to find something stronger. Especially with the fact that Adiv has this time advantage to him. He's gonna definitely make good use of it. And yeah. That's how it goes. I'm not so sure what's left for Patrick Shishka to try here. At this point, probably he should give up on trying to win the game and he should focus on trying to not lose it. That is what I believe given the current position. I would say most probably Adi is just gonna play either J10 in this position or play the 4 first. It's kind of equal, doesn't matter which one you do first. Maybe playing the 4 first is slightly better. Regardless, there's block, so there's no threat. He's taking his time though. Okay, he chose a different way of playing the four. I'm somewhat surprised, but this is also not a losing combination. And it may be enough to make Patter try to attack even more, get surrounded even more, which would help Adif in the end to snatch a win. Yeah, White is completely suffocated in the position. I don't know what what's gonna happen. Patrick is either going to time out or blunder. For me, those are the likeliest scenarios. Oh, a defensive move there. Surprised. I thought uh, Adif is going to take his time now and launch his own attack. But... Seemingly, he wants to remain passive. He's hoping... His opponent would run out of time eventually, but Patrzyszka is also a strong blitz player. So it's somewhat unlikely that he would just run out of time. Oh, those, those little nothings are not really helping. Arif should think of using this area to build his attack. But he may be satisfied with the draw as well, I'm not sure. I am unfamiliar with their instructions from the captain. Although as I have played myself in the team, there were never instructions on playing for a draw or I don't know. Yeah, it just never happened, but I really don't understand these passive moves. He should really attack this space. For some reason, he doesn't want to. Okay, now he's trying, but in a way that it is going to be defended. So my prediction for this game is a draw. Based on how it's developing.
I'm not sure what he's thinking. I'm gonna quickly play f3. Position is safe, solid. No reason to blunder now. Yeah, and with those non-real attacks, he pretty much used up the space there, which means there's not much left to attack. It's gonna be a draw. But a blunder is coming from Cherok. Wow, there's a two-move win here. And Adif is missing it. Holy moly. What's happening? Adif is way too focused on playing a defensive move, no matter what. It seems to me that he is not fully focused on winning this game. Seems like he is satisfied with the draw. He even offers it now. But Charok does not accept it. He has already made one blunder. There's basically barely anything left for him to try. What's he even thinking? He's also lower on time. He should be happy to have a draw after that blunder. Why did he not accept it? This is not the time to fight. The time has ended. That was just a bit of suffering, at least in my opinion. Because what can you possibly imagine to get? Highly unlikely that a last minute blunder is coming, especially that there's barely any space left for yeah, now it's draw. So now it's draw. It's four and a half, one and a half after the first round. And finally, some time to check what Cherok possibly could have done so that he lost this game. Okay, so this was the position. Oh, he overlooked the two moves win. Wow. That's... That's insane. He did not see this? Wow. I was very surprised that that game was over. And with Adif's win especially. From that hopeless situation. He gets away with a free win. That's... That's interesting. Pressure was too much for Petr Zizka, seemingly. As the captain wrote on the table, on the chat, Dark Team is leading 4.5 to 1.5 after the first round of the second semi-final of EuroLeague 23-24 season. Oh, I only see now wasn't G13 win. At what position? In which game? Sorry, I only now see this comment from Oleg Bulatovsky, silver medalist of the World Championship in 2019. Welcome to the stream. In the meantime, we have pairings for round two, so maybe Gallo, please, please tell me which game, which position you think of G13 as a winning move. For Tsarok after got surrounded. Um, we can real quick check, I guess. Where is he? Yeah, maybe this is faster.
You mean here G13? Probably not here. G13. I don't see where. Or when. Instead of G6. Okay. Thank you. So here G13. Ah, uh, this is 13 actually. Yeah. So. There would be this frat for VCFs. But you can still block with F8. F8 blocks this diagonal and also this diagonal. The idea is great itself, but it looks like F8 can save it. And also, if not F8, you can just overline using K8. So possibly even anything here. Or maybe even just, just F12, you overline and play here. So, good idea, but unfortunately, fortunately there would be defense still. It was really tough after E7, I believe. E7 was the game winner, at least uh, half point, but he could have won, I'm, I'm convinced. Anyhow... Let's get back to our second round games in this Euroleague semi-final. After a little bit of the usual resizing of the board, let's go and see how the guys are doing. Maybe this a bit smaller. Yeah, alright, should be enough. Okay, so we have Adif with the same opening against Peroxid. Peroxid picks white, and it's game on. Let's see how prepared Peroxid is from this opening. Probably not much. Adam Horvat responded with a swap to, to the opening of Michal Saik. And Miha Zyke is thinking, I expect him to pick white and play j5 because it's very advantageous for white. White has tempo, white has space, it can expand the attack to the central area of the board easily with a couple of nice moves. I believe uh, Puholek has excellent chances of bagging his third point here tonight. Meanwhile, Peaceman opened the same opening. And there was a swap to play by Cherok. This one picked white and is being aggressive from the start already. It looks like Patrizhishka might be in trouble. He might be in trouble. Well, apparently he is not in a very good shape recently. Um, a week ago, on a Saturday, the Bruno Cup took place in the Bruno in the Czech Republic, and Patrzyszka, although he had, I believe, five points after several rounds, um, he lost to Lukas Socek. And um, also to Miroslav Haza, defeated Jakub Foytik and four kids. So 
from those five points, four were against Kids and against Lukas Socek and Miroslav Haza, he could not prevail. And also that first match against Adrian Fitzerman, it seems like Patrishka is just out of shape. Maybe there will be a substitution for the last round at least to Jakub Horak, who is in possibly a better shape. He took the bronze medal in Bruno a week ago. But we shall see how the acting captain decides on that. And that acting captain has decided already on his strategy against Adrian Fitzerman. Some quick moves um, already in the position. It looks like it's not really a good strategy from Paroxed. Pretty sure Adif is gonna be defensive here. Play simply i7. And that looks more than enough to me for the future because you keep these offensive lines as well as get chances for attacking upstairs so what could you possibly do after i7 with white it does look really bad i would not want to be white after i7 playing some offensive move here could also work because you can force m6 but but you need some calculations for that yeah actually now that i spent more than three seconds probably l4 has to be played because after m6 you have to play n6 and then you just play m3 and you would have some some attack here no it's it's not enough because l3 l3 blocks and this diagonal is blocked by the edge of the board so i'm back to thinking i7 is the move you need here i believe this h6 was not the very best move in the position i would have probably played l i i7 maybe or something more aggressive, more leaning towards the space. And this allowed Adam Horvat to try and fight back in the position. He is launching his his little counter attack here. Not sure if it can work or it can be enough, but he for sure tries it. Just like uh, Pavel Novak is trying his attack down there against Patrizhishka, trying to force him. But it might not be enough. We shall see. Probably, probably the next step in his attack is either playing i4 or simply f4. If he plays i4, then probably right after he will play f4. I don't know, I would probably just play f4 and be a bit more patient for a future attack. Regardless, f4 has to be played sooner or later to prevent black from attacking there. Adif is still calculating whether there is a way to win there or not. Let's see if he can find something. Adam Horvat launches his counter attack in the bottom right corner. But it looks like uh, Michal Zayk has a really, really good control over the situation. 
Black is getting very, very surrounded there. Okay, Adif, Adif voted on a different way of attacking. He did play L4 and now is forcing, instead of playing M5 to force N6, he plays N6 to force O7. That's quite, quite creative. Quite creative. O7 is forced very much. And afterwards, there is a somewhat maybe longer combination with this, but this can also be blocked from above, so it might not be over. Oh, but it's blocked from the middle. If it's blocked from the middle, it's over. Yeah, it's over. It's, it was blocked from the middle, therefore it's over. Peroxid needed to block it from above. Because this way is just a quick combination. And it's GG. Now you can just play K4. L3, J2, J3, and it's done. Now Adam Horvat is, he has still not given up on coming back here. He might be able to actually. Bit depends on also what moves uh, his opponent is gonna make. But the threat on K7 looks looks interesting and exciting. Adam Horvat is a cool offensive player. I like his style at least. He could be coming back there. Oh yeah, about the resizing. I'm I'm not saying that uh, it's good or bad. You know, it's it's just I find it personally hard to properly resize it so that you know it's not symmetric. The boards are not the exact same size. I just can't make it all three at the same time to the exact same size, and it's a bit hurtful to my eyes. <laughs> I don't know how to solve that. I just can't. I can't. It's not that easy. Definitely not easy. But as always, we are very grateful for for all of those contributions that you have been doing alone. Oh wow, and Michal Zyg decides he's blocking on M4. What made him do that? Now K7 is just... Unavoidably coming. What's the deal here? You have to play probably K8 to survive. And then Black's gonna go back to the central area, take control over the position. Table's turn. Table's turn. Be surprising to me, I did not expect it that he would play M4 as a defensive move. But maybe he was worried that he would not be able to defend after if he plays J7 and then K7 comes. This could still be defended, I mean. Probably not the very best of scenarios because now probably just H8 incoming. And then Black's rather in favor of the position, but at least it's not surely losing, so maybe that was the way he was thinking. And right here we could see, just I was kind of not talking about this game, but I saw that E6 was played after this I4, not F4. Pavel Novak did not want to play an F4, he plays a different combination in my opinion allowing some space to his opponent to create some threats 
as well as giving up on being the one playing here right after so he wants to play the long game it seems it doesn't look like black can do a lot of things here to be fair but maybe black does not need to do a lot of things there black can maybe simply block on i don't know e8 or f7 to defend this area because don't get me wrong this has to be defended this area and afterwards a move like j8 can be instantly played maybe but you also have to think of using this area a possible possible offensive idea would be to play here on k7 maybe extend the attack to the right side after k7 gets played you can still play on j8 alternatively l7 you have to think of a nice nice combination there quick moves quick moves by the players on the middle board i still believe that adam horvat is in control of this position after the aftermath of m4 it's gonna be hard for Michal Zayk to build something there he needs to pay attention to his clock as well Adam Horvat has only a minute more but as they are approaching mutual time trouble and the end game one minute time advantage can be more than enough just for example Patrzyszka is below one minute and Pavel Novak only fell now below three and a half on the first board we have Adrian Fitzerman choosing black from the opening of of uh, Stepan Tesajik he immediately played his white piece and Adif is launching his attack an aggressive approach from Peroxid can this work out though surely surely there is some suitable black attack there I believe it it kind of feels like he's gambling we'll see if if it's enough for him but it sure does look like he's gambling to me okay will will he attack now he could easily play d6 to threaten but he doesn't need to he can already go into the area into the space into this area i would probably do that and he's doing that i think it's great black cannot really do anything here in my opinion because of this cut especially so what's gonna happen patrishishka on 13 seconds can he defend here we should see it's not looking great for him definitely not looking great for him on the middle board it looks like it looks like uh, adam horvat is managing to a little bit surround his opponent to some extent at least with some good positional moves i believe he could snatch a win there yeah life of perfectionists are definitely not easy i'm fancying f10 in the position it looks it looks quite interesting to me i would definitely not use up any of my resources down there because for the following reasons there's a time deficit and if you don't play the direct moves 
but keep them in mind, you can use them later on, and it will be harder to calculate with them. Oh, an overline, I think that's a mistake. It looks like a mistake to me. It does look like a mistake to me. I would definitely go all out attack now. Wherever. Doesn't even matter. Just go totally attack, but not directly. Never directly. Well, let's see if he can make it work. On the first board, it looks like the gambling is still ongoing. Adif is... Well, not sure how to put it, but he has a really strong position. And another win there might mean that the match is already over. Okay, quick moves, quick moves. Petr Zizka is trying to survive. Pavel Novak is pushing him. He's playing fast moves. He does not let Petr Zizka breathe in the position. Will this work out for him well? We need to need to be patient a little more to see what he has in mind. It could work out. It could easily work out. Isn't there a win now? You play J11. Play G11. Then G14. And then close it on I12. Because this attack, you don't need to care about it. There's cut. Which means you can easily win here. Actually, you don't even need the direct approach. You can just play J11 and then go for G14, in my opinion. Suitable. Suitable, yeah. And Adam Horvat managed to find a win there against Michal Zajk. So a little bit of comeback for the Czechs. They very much need it, but here Petr Zizka is losing one more time. It does look like to me that Peaceman sees the beautiful combination, executes it, and takes another very important point for his team. Well played by Pavel Novak. A strong combo to finish his opponent off in the game. Well done. Here Adifak played the expected move. I would say that the only thing can that can be tried here by uh, Stepan Tesajic would be H3. That's the only move to which I have not seen the win yet. And so he plays H3. The rest of the moves were rather easy to prove, losing, of course, in the position. To h3, I have not found yet the combination. There can be forest moves, of course. For example, if h2 gets played, you would possibly need to play i1. But these forced moves, I don't know if there is actually a win in the position. Of course, if f2 gets played, you have to overline. No doubt. Yes, you have to overline. No way around it. But is it enough to overline it? And probably, yes, block from E1. Probably, yes. Quickly spotted by the Czech veteran who has above 7 minutes in the game. And Adifag is falling below too. We can see that on the middle board, the same opening has been played by Adam Horvat, and 
Michal Zak tried to convert it into his own opening with the additional two stones somewhat to his own opening. Something to in which you know he's more familiar with the course of action. Not sure, not sure if this can work out, but we will definitely see how it's gonna be played out. Okay, so Adam Horvath eventually chose white, played on j7, quickly answered by k6. I believe it's not the time to be a hero. You should be a bit more cautious here, be more patient. I expect k5 to come in the position. On the third board, we see Petr Shishka played one of his rather newer openings that he has been playing recently in the recent months. Pavel Novak chose white, plays aggressively, some theory is getting played here. I can't say much because I'm not familiar with the theory. So, I don't know if it's good or bad. To me, it looks black. You play the 4 and then block in the middle. And then what? then it does look like white is doomed so i'm not really sure what patrick is, is thinking about especially it's his own opening so i'm really not sure about it adrian fitzerman launches his aggressive line there has he found something i believe probably not but but he's being aggressive there. He's low on time. He has to. He has to attack. And apparently, he he definitely has some some good forcing <laughs> moves still in the game. For example, this move has to be blocked from below because of uh, four times four. If Shepard Tesajik is not careful enough, he's gonna lose this game quickly. Not to mention these underlying threats on the right side. There still can be so much done with black to win this game. Not sure what Paroxid is thinking now. This move is, is obvious. He finds it now. And now Adif has to think of something. I don't see a direct winning combination just yet. He might be in a bit of a trouble because his time control, his, his time, his clock is below 30 seconds, almost below 20 seconds now. He needs to come up with something. It's not looking good. He should actually, there's no threat for white, so he could play a positional move. But that doesn't really fit his style, does it? So not sure what to expect from this game. This will almost definitely be blocked from above on G10. And here you can see that K6, uh, sorry, K5 was not played. Instead, he went on J8, very aggressive, maybe overly aggressive, if you ask me. And now, and now what Mihal Zayk needs to think over is whether to play i6 first and then l7 or l7 first not sure really not sure both could be good oh something something else was chosen but why did i miss something I don't know if I missed something, but it's losing this way. There's a VCF. This was not necessary. Also not. There is this VCF. This 4, 4, 4, 4, 4. It's a VCF. Adif just played these moves to get some time to calculate the winning line, but he misses it. Oh no, he does not see the VCF. So it might still be saved because of Adif's low time. Interesting. 
some hard moments from uh, for Adrian Fitzerman against Japan Tesaji. It looks like the Czech player can still defend. Mihazak decided to play S7 directly without I6. It is probably a good decision from him. I believe simply simply Adam Horvath was a bit too aggressive this time. He could have been more patient there. On the third board, Patrushka has launched his attack against Pavel Nova. As expected, Black is overpowered in the position. Really not much that could be done from White's perspective. I'm not sure why he chose white there. Maybe he wanted to try and the point advantage for his team definitely allowed it. So can't really blame him on that, but still. I don't often recommend choosing color in openings you don't know. Unless you see clear advantage. Back to the first board, maybe, where Adif is hanging on 5 seconds. Stepan Tesajic needs to think over whether G8 can be enough. Then something like E13 could be troublesome for him. Although still looks blockable to me. In any case, I would probably block this from above. Yeah, I would I would probably do that because otherwise you might find yourself in some trouble. At the same time this area is still super open. It looks like Adrian is a bit struggling being on the attack but the huge advantage has to eventually grow into a win. Unless his time deficit. I mean, he already had a win, which he missed, so maybe his time deficit will, will disallow him from winning once more. You can't know. Patrick Zizka won the second game as it was expected. So we have 1-1 there. To remind, here Adam Horvath won the first game and here Adrian Fitzerman had a win in the first one. Now it's a somewhat sharp position. Definitely Mihal Zayk needs to do some calculations. But he plays a quick move. L5. This might just be really quickly answered by L6, although the aggressive approach of Adam Horvath has tricked us, or at least me, a couple of times before, so why not again? Okay, it looks like Adif is blocking. Why would he do that? Okay, it looks like it looks like Japan Tesajik is away in the clear. The resources are coming to an end sooner or later. You can't play defensively in advantageous positions too much because that's just not good. Is this a winning position though? Blocking this in the middle, black immediately gonna play here. This move is what I'm thinking about. And Adif is thinking about it as well. Great, great. It's especially great because not a lot of defense can be imagined here. There will be a VCF here. So you can't use this. 
j7 is not sufficient because you combine it with vcf so you have to think of something else possibly k7 possibly k7 oh no k8 has been played which means the vcf is simply there it simply has to be played more than one vcf is allowed now and eventually adrian fitzerman takes the second point there so it's 2-0 for him against Stepan Tesashi. Overall, 4 points in 4 games. Well, things happen. So the last ongoing game is between Adam Horvat and Michal Zayek, where Michal Zayek is on the move with black pieces. E9, G11 also won after C12. Up. Possibly, I believe there were more wins there than just one. Black was way too overpowered there. I think he made the right decision of choosing color there. As I've said, it felt like uh, Paroxid is gambling. It does look like though. Check payback is, is done. How could they come back from this? No way they can come back from this. So this round is 3-2 so far. Which means 7.5. 3.5. In total. They need more than ever Adam Horvath to win this game. And he is not looking great. At least, I mean, his position is not looking great. That's what I wanted to say. This this uh, age eight has been a very smart move from Michal Zayk. It's it's excellently taking control over the position. I really like it. Even if, even if right now he's gonna need to play these lines, and well, coming to think of it, wasn't this a winning move for White if this was played first? Because now the the way I see K5 has to be played, these moves do not seem sufficient to me. They just do not. So I believe K5 has to be played here. So maybe H8 was not that good. <laughs> or at least, you know, you, had, you should have played the 4 first. But positionally, it's, it's a good controlling move. You just have to normally ensure there's no win for your opponent after a positional move. Oh, a different approach. Okay. So, what now? I expect this gets played. And then you push the attack above. It's okay, five for white now. And after K5 is played, you can push the attack above. Hmm. 
Okay, Adam Horvath is calculating. This definitely has to be blocked from above. Oh, he blocks it from below. That just opens up chances for M9, which is a Fukumi. M9 is a Fukumi and it has to be played. You have to play M9 here. It's a winning move. And he plays it. Great course of action. So the second round is gonna be a draw between them, making it seven and a half, four and a half in total. Because there's just no way Black can defend this position. There is this dia this this threat with the fours. Also this threat, and there's a longer one if this gets blocked with this line, so there's basically absolutely no defense there. Yeah, now just, just play K10, remain indirect, and it's over even faster. But of course, a bunch of winning combinations now in that position. Okay. Mihal Zyke resigns. Adam Horvath wins, eventually the aggressive approach pays off. Wow. Alright, so seven and a half, four and a half before we turn to the last round. I'm expecting a substitution. Jakub Horak to replace Petr Zizka. You can also see a tournament invitation to the Gomoku Club Discord servers tournament which will be here on the display 5 uh, website starting time 5 minutes after 8 pm i guess greggy would like to substitute himself in to the match that is miroslav haza but apparently he is not a team member this season Allow me to take a short one minute break. I will be back right away. The checks can still turn this around.
All right, I'm back. We have the pairings for the last round. Adam Horvat one more time with his opening. This time against Adrian Fitzerman. It looks like Paroxid substituted himself, so Patrick Zizka can stay in for the last round. Yeah, Paroxid also lost all of his games, I think. Well, let's see the young player in action. Apparently, yeah, I knew it, I knew it. The opening, Pavel Novak has been playing. Kuba Horak has been playing it much longer. So no doubt he chose white immediately in the opening. That could be a freebie. Meanwhile, Patrick Zizka is opening the same one against Mihal Saik as he did in the previous round against Pavel Novak. Just to be clear, the Czechs need rather a miracle because they would need to score 5 points as I have mentioned at the start of this match due to Dark Team being placed higher in the base season a draw in this match would mean that Dark Team advances current scoreline is 7.5, 4.5 so Dark Team needs only 1.5 points to advance that ain't a lot, just one and a half points, they don't even need to win the match, a draw is more than enough for them, still every point will be fought for I'm pretty sure, Miha Zayk tries to convert this into something he likes to play one more time, I am, I am not sure if this could work, this could work actually, but well, it feels like black is a bit bit powerful there, if played well. Of course, white could have its chances, so it could be, could be still really interesting. Meanwhile, Kuba Horak is unmercifully progressing against Pavel Novak and Adrian Fitzerman to my surprise plays a swap too against Adam Horvat he really did not want to take risks there he sided with a swap too super interesting so what is yeah, okay. Already chosen. Adam Horvath chose black already. He did not hesitate. And Patrishka chose white and plays aggressively. I I'm not sure if it's gonna be sufficient. Definitely Mihazak is gonna try his best to stabilize the position and if so he could easily surround Petr Shishka just like Adrian Fitzerman did if the check is not careful enough. The first board looks quite balanced so far. And on the other side I wouldn't be surprised if Kuba Horak would have a win already on the board. Can the Czechs pull it off? They need to win 5 games at least from this last 6. 
obviously no substitutions for dark team the starting three remains in action one substitution from the Czechs can Jakub Horak bring the point given the fact that he is supposed to really know this opening will that be enough to score a really interesting positional battle ahead of us in the game between Adam Horvat and Adrian Fitzemann. Nothing is decided there, especially knowing how defensive Adrian can get regardless of the situation. Petr Zizka is trying some local standard way of attacking. Uh, by standard way here I don't mean that it's textbook attacking. I rather mean that uh, he is following shapes from standard Gomoku. Which might not be enough here, let's let's be fair. Mihal Zaik is the one who needs to solve the situation there. Meanwhile it looks like Pavel Novak might have surprised Jakub Horak as for the first time in the game Jakub Horak needs to take his time to decide on his next move. This approach from Adrian Fitzerman is even more defensive than I was expecting. Black has tempo in the position likely h7 is going to be played now followed by probably h8 and then i9 that would be a standard way of playing in such position but of course adam horvat is known for playing non-standard offensive lines if i was him i would consider playing i9 first or h7 first both seem like a good option to base a future attack i would be gladly black in that position Mihal Zag decided to play e5 and let's see patrick still tries to to stick to some some standard way of attacking there i mean the standard shape of course probably g7 is about to come maybe g8 no g8 is losing of course so g7 but he may also think of attacking here let's be fair f4 g3 it's not looking terrible It's worth worth a thought at least. Okay. So the standard way was played h7, h8, e i9. So right now probably i10 may come. Really not sure. If i10 is coming indeed then g6 would be the standard answer there could be better moves though and they really need the wins so adam horvat needs to do his absolute utmost best in this game to defeat his opponent yeah i10 did arrive so some some blitz moves like g6 might not be enough for the win it could be enough for a draw but they need more than that to advance to the final of this Euroleague season. Okay, G6 have been played eventually. At Kuba Horak, after thoroughly evaluating the situation, the position has made his decision. 
they decided to attack directly he played a four and peaceman is taking his time maybe he's afk i don't know but it's an open four this is not the moment to waste valuable seconds of your time Anyhow, I already expect that uh, the final will be very exciting based on how exciting this match already is. The final may even be like decided on a one point or it could easily finish with the draw and then Dark Team wins because they placed higher in the base season. Now it's looking a little bit impossible for the Czechs to win 5 games out of the remaining 6. Especially, especially that uh, Mihal Zayk is in a rather favorable position against Petr Zizka. It looks like the attack of Petr Zizka is not good one more time. He could probably revert back to defense. I really don't see a way of continuing. Yes, he's, he's blocking. He's trying to save what can be saved. Right there. But this just means that now Mihal Zayk can launch his own attack. It does appear to me that Kuba Horak managed to solve the position and has a win on board, which he still needs to execute, of course. But the keys are here the diagonals. The diagonals are gonna be keys, regardless of where it's getting blocked. The diagonals are gonna be the keys of winning this game. And here on the first board, Adifak one more time below 30 seconds, his opponent above 7 minutes. A crucial moment. Adrian Fitzerman is in trouble. Especially, this can easily be blocked from above, in my opinion. There's no threat in it because you can cut it easily. So there's no attack here whatsoever because once this move's played, you have to revert back to defense. I would easily block it from above. It looks like the better move. And so is Adam Horvat. He blocks it from above. Are they falling below 20 seconds? What is the runner-up of the previous World Championship gonna do here? Oh, he tries his famous positional defense one more time. But it's... It, there is no way, it cannot work. You can simply go, go on F9 and attack. Oh, small issue with this. I see at least a small issue with it. Oh no, no issue. No issue at all. This is a quick win combo. Quick win combo, direct win. So there was a quicker win even. Which Adam Horvat instantly spotted, it seems. G7. Then E7. And then the fours on F6, G5. A quick win ensuring him the first point right there and here we have Mihal Saik falling below two minutes Patrzyszka on four he's planning his attack most probably if I would be playing 
I wouldn't play this first. Instead, I would simply play this. It had to be played there. You force it, you play the 4-4, four, four, and then attack here. Force your opponent. But Mihal Zayk had a different idea. Let's see if this one can work out for him as well. Or not. I believe this gave some resources for Petr Zizka. Oh, and Adam Horvat actually, he just played i6. He did not even see the win. I'm surprised, more surprised than I could say. So he did not see the win there actually, he just, he just played it. And then he could not find the win. Which means... Adrian Fitzerman may survive one more time or... What's gonna happen? I have no idea, but he may get lucky once more. Really no idea. Now here this provides an excellent opportunity of playing J4. Will he do it? Nope, he is a bit more passive maybe because of his time deficit. But it looked like it could be a viable option to, to just play J4. Be aggressive there. Still the position is in favor of him. And Kuba Horag deals the final blow and takes the first point in the last round apparently. Okay, Adif hanging on 4 seconds, but the win is kind of wasted, so this is not gonna work, there's a cut, only way you can make it work is if you play this 4 first, yes, it can be made work. You have to play this 4 first, then this 3, therefore you block the diagonal, and then you can play the VCF. So there actually is one more time a win for him, but there would be an even faster one with just this short combination. Terrific, very exciting moments as Adam Horvat is under pressure trying to find one of his wins against Adrian Fitzerman, who has long for for long time below 10 seconds, he's long before 10 seconds, and he is fighting for survival, pretty much. He is one more time in a losing position. There's Two ways at least, I've counted two ways at least to win with uh, with uh, black. Oh, and it does look like Adam Horvath found one of them.
but but he oversees the four and loses the game holy holy so probably this is the last nail in the coffin for check payback that just out of nowhere adrian fitterman got lucky no other way to put it Pressure was too much for Adam Horvath. He oversaw a simple, simple four. That's just horrific. That must be, must be very, very painful for him right now. I do not envy him. On the other board, it appears that Patrzyszka managed to to get in a favorable position against Michal Zeig, but they are both very low on time. Who's gonna make a mistake? Can he find a winning line there? Now the four will be played from... Michal Saik. It just looks insufficient for now at least. But it could still be won. Question is whether Petr Zizka finds something. But that's gonna be blocked. That's the wrong way of playing it. Dramatic moments. Really dramatic moments there. In time trouble, Patrick makes a crucial mistake, and he's also losing a one game. He really is just not in shape. Wow. From a lost position, he was in a winning one, only to blow it in time trouble. The fate of Jack Payback is is done. It's decided. Two points already. Even if Kuba Horak managed to take his point against Pavel Novak, the two wasted wins and lost games mean that Dark Team scored two points already, which means they have nine and a half points. They will not advance because they are the higher seeded team. They have already won the match. And still three games are left to be played. So they can even expand the difference. Regardless, we have the second finalist of this EuroLeague season. It's the title defending team. The only Polish team in the competition. It's dark team. So obviously congratulations to them, they had a great season, phenomenal performance throughout the year, really really confident wins, and I'm looking forward to face them in the final as the other team is, as I have briefly mentioned before, is the team I'm currently captaining, it's Serial Chillers. We're also pretty decent, if I may say. Probably Lukas Socek from Czech Republic, aka Bonslash. He's going to stream that match ever since I'm gonna be playing. His Twitch is uh, twitch.tv slash bonexo. So make sure you subscribe to not miss the stream of the final. And until then, let's get back to this match and see where the last three games are heading. A scheme from Jakub Horak answered by a swap to and Kuba Horak decided to pick white pieces and launch an attack immediately be aggressive in the position 
but it does not look like it's gonna be as easy as he might have been thinking so he needs to be very very careful on his moves to not trouble himself too much there and Adrian Fitzerman played the same opening one more time it was answered by a swap to from Adam Horvath Adif picked white they're fighting Adif is in a better position for now at least meanwhile there was a swap to I believe from Patrick Zizka as well against Michal Zayk Michal Zayk picked white and is already on his way to surround his opponent in the bottom left corner the positional advantage can be later on turned into a win so the Czech player has to be really careful to not get very stuck in the corner already Okay, it looks like Kuba Horak is launching his offensive line. Will it be enough to defeat Pavel Novak? Both players were in the top 12. They played in the 80, that is the final of the Gomok World Championship last year, as they both managed to qualify in Budapest. This time they're facing each other again, however the time control is much lower of course. 1-0 so far for Kuba Horak, can the Polish player equalize now? I would not be entirely surprised if Michal Zajk would choose to play H6 to remain on the outside because it would be very very hard to win somewhere in the bottom left corner with black possibly only way to win there is thanks to a mistake I don't see any other way through for Patrick to win there and Michal Zajk plays h6 rather quickly he still has more than 8 minutes on his clock confident play by the Polish player and on the first board we can see that Adam Horvat is in a little bit of positional trouble against Adrian Fitzerman who has built a quite good looking position definitely has some space some lines he can connect later on it will not be easy I believe for the check to stay in game there especially he must be quite upset over over the game from the previous previous uh, game where he made that fatal mistake in a winning position he was struggling to close the game and when he thought he found the final winning sequence he overlooked the four and therefore lost the game Probably Adifak is thinking of playing K6 because if M6 is played, he answers with M9 swiftly. This gets played, this gets played, this gets played, and then there's a win. So, ha therefore, if K6 is played, you can only block from the left side with black. If you block from the right side, you have lost the game. Most probably the Czech player is going to notice that but even if he does Adifak can play m6 render black 
to rather nothing there and then push the space which is why the position of white is quite comfortable Patrzyszka is attempting to get back into this game with the positional f7 which is a not bad threat in the position um, he is aiming to avoid getting stuck into the bottom left corner of course as well as uh, expand his options towards the central area take some control of the situation there and he might be able to to manage it in my opinion at least Pavel Novak decided to go a bit more aggressive this could work out for him he might put up enough of a challenge for Kuba Horak so that he makes a mistake on the attack actually I don't really see how to continue this attack so I'm wondering whether there will be something or not doesn't look easy to continue attacking there at least that's for sure And let's see how the silver medalist of the previous world championship can use the space ahead of him to build an attack and convert it into a win let's see how he can do that the resources are given the space is given he needs a good attack but today he is especially slow if I may say he is kind of like the opposite of the way he played in the Team World Beast Championship so far where he spends barely any time on thinking and in some of those games his clock was well above one minute even though the time control is one minute plus one second Fisher increment so there he obviously doesn't really care about it and he's just playing fast whilst here he takes his time tonight at least very much to some extent where he is fighting with seconds in in many of the games and just so there is no confusion from the two approaches i'm definitely voting on the second one Let's see what offensive idea he has come up with. I am definitely looking forward to it. it's so nice to see that Pavel has time to make such jokes in such important matches
Okay, so the medical records are rather private. And here Black could have attempted a VCF, however, it would have been in a way because there would be a cut. But it looks like Adip's offensive idea just enabled Anakin to to try and attack himself. For some reason though he did not play here. Did not use the force. Which I'm yet to understand why, but regardless it looks like So it looks like Black can attack here, can continue the attack here. Probably not a winning attack, but... This might work, this idea of Anakin's, it could work easily. Here Patrushka is tr still trying to come out of the corner and it looks like he may be effectively doing it. He built a win position if I'm not mistaken. Because wherever you block this diagonal thread, Black's playing on b5, creating a win on e8 as well as on b7, which means the game's over. And it looks like Adif could find defense to the attempt of Adam Horvat. Mihal Zaik resigns, Petr Zizka at least makes some beautification on the score, some cosmetics. The match is although decided already after those first two lost games by him and Anakin. Well, let's see what we have here. It does look like... It does look like... Adifak has managed to very much stabilize the position. But no, there's a win left there. Yes. Yes. Adam Horvath finds it this time, plays it. And he also manages to... do some cosmetics. Very pitiful that they did not manage to take those wins in the first games this could have been a different ending but it is what it is oh wow Kuba Horak missed the VCF I mean VCF threat of his opponent because it's a few moves VC up there. So as you can see, Pavel Novak was indeed only joking. He did not need my instructions. He played a VCF, he started to play it faster than I could say where it is. A quick finish and overall yet another confident win by the dark team against the Czech payback so we have the second finalist as well in the Euro League this has been a very exciting evening I'm not gonna lie I've been talking so much I've got a bit tired from it so anyhow I thank you all for your attention we have been quite good with uh, viewership tonight most of the time it was around 10 viewers I believe so pretty decent thank you all uh, for joining 
and make sure to subscribe to Bone Slashes Twitch channel to watch the final because I'm like 99% sure he's going to stream it. So once more, it's twitch.tv slash bonexo. And see you next time, I guess, with some Timber Blitz Championship stream or whatever. And possibly, possibly soon the videos of the Breno Cup streams are going to be found on Gomoku TV's YouTube channel as well. Anyhow, thank you for spending the night with me, the evening with me. Hope it was fun for you as well. See you next time. Good night.